Hey folks, Julian here. Now in this video, I am going to show you how to use the 32-bit float digital output on your NT1 fifth generation. Now this is the first microphone in the world to offer 32-bit float recording. It is an incredibly useful feature that allows you to record the full dynamic range of the microphone, and then you have the flexibility to set your audio levels after recording. This just means that you don't need to worry about setting your gain before recording to avoid clipping. And if your audio does clip, you can simply set it to the ideal level afterwards to remove the distortion. To learn more about 32-bit float recording, how it works and why it's useful, check out the video in the link below. Let me show you how to get set up for 32-bit float recording. First of all, it is important to note that 32-bit recording only works via the NT1 fifth generation's USB output. And this is because the processing happens within the microphone's inbuilt interface, which is of course part of its digital USB output. It's also important to note that you will also need a digital audio workstation or other audio software that supports 32-bit float recording. Not all software does, so be sure to check out the link in the description below for more info on what DAWs you can use. To get started, ensure that your NT1 5th gen is plugged into your computer via USB. Now, the process from here is a bit different on a Mac than it is on a Windows computer. I'll start by showing you the process on a Mac, but if you do use a Windows computer, feel free to skip ahead via the timestamps. Once you've connected your mic, open your computer's audio MIDI setup screen and select the NT1 fifth generation from the list of audio devices on the left. Now, this is actually where you set your mic's bit depth and sample rate, as well as control the mic's input gain. We are gonna click the format dropdown and select 32-bit float. You can record in 32-bit float at any sample rate, but there are some things that you might need to consider if recording higher than 48 kilohertz sample rate. So for now, we're just going to select 48. Now, the rest of the process from here will be slightly different depending on which audio software you're using. For this video, we are gonna use Reaper, but check out the link in the description to see our walkthrough guides for other popular DAWs. So firstly, we are going to open a new session in Reaper, and from the top toolbar, we are gonna to navigate to Options, Settings, and Device. From here, we just need to click the Audio Device dropdown and select Rode NT1 fifth generation. Now, from the top toolbar, we'll need to go to File, Project Settings, Media, and under the WAV Bit Depth dropdown, we are gonna choose 32-bit FP. Now we can click OK to exit the menu, and then we'll just need to create an audio track by clicking Track, Insert New Track. On your audio track on the far left of the screen, click the Record Arm button. So now you're set up and ready to start recording 32-bit float audio. Okay, now let's take a look at 32-bit float recording on a Windows PC. To get started, you'll need to download and install the custom NT1 fifth generation ASIO driver from our website. Once this is installed and you are ready to record, close all audio programs and apps that you may have open to ensure that they don't conflict with the ASIO driver. The rest of the process will be slightly different depending on which audio software you're using. It's also important to note that some DAWs don't support ASIO drivers, such as Audacity. Again, in this video, we're gonna be using Reaper to demonstrate. First up, we'll open Reaper and we'll head to File, Project Settings, Media, Recording, and under the WAV Bit Depth dropdown, we'll select 32-bit FP. Now we'll need to go to Options, down to Preferences, and under Audio, we'll select Device. And here, under the Audio System dropdown, we'll select ASIO, and under ASIO driver, we'll choose NT1 fifth gen float. To set your sample rate, ensure that the request sample rate box is ticked and type it in the box. Now we just need to click on the ASIO configuration panel and choose your output, such as your headphones under the output device dropdown menu. In this panel, you can also set your input gain and adjust your buffer size in order to manage any latency issues. Exit the menu and create an audio track by going to Track, Insert New Track. On your audio track on the far left of the screen, click the Record Arm button. Okay, you are now set up and ready to start recording 32-bit float audio. 
So now that I've shown you how to set up a session for 32-bit float recording, let me show you the different ways that you can use this incredible feature on the Mac setup that we had earlier. Here I have an audio track recorded in standard 24-bit. Now in this section, my input gain was set way too high. And as you can see by the waveform here, the audio clipped when the playing got particularly loud. If I try to adjust the level now, it will still be clipped because I exceeded the dynamic range of the 24-bit recording. However, this track below it was recorded in 32-bit float. This means that I can adjust the audio after recording and still retain all of the audio information because the dynamic range of the 32-bit recording is so wide. So let's take a listen now that we've normalized this track. As you can hear, that is completely clean with no clipping whatsoever. And that is the magic of 32-bit float. And there you have it. That's how you record in 32-bit float using your NT1 fifth generation on both Mac and Windows computers. Thanks for watching and happy recording, everyone.